What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're talking sourcing, but from a beginner's perspective, how to find that first, how to find that second product with no fancy softwares and really just Keepa and Cellgram. So stick around for the video, we'll hop into my screen and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Cool, so let's get started. So starting off, you know, uh, selling on Amazon as a beginner, you're just naturally not going to have a lot of information privy to, right? You're not gonna have all like the competitive storefronts, Cool, so let's get started. So as a beginner Amazon seller, Cool, so let's get started. As a beginner Amazon seller, you have to work with what you got, right? You're not going to have a lot of experience and knowledge of the industry. You're going to be working with the bare minimum, probably very few softwares, right? Keepa, SellerAmp is what I would suggest starting with. But the one thing you do have and the one thing that you'll always have is access to other sellers' storefronts, right? This is probably the biggest luxury we have as Amazon sellers is access to the information in other people's storefronts because their teams, their seller, whatever, they, they have put work in to populate their catalog with at some point profitable inventory. Our job in referencing and, and utilizing and leveraging other storefronts is trying to simply reverse engineer where they bought the products. Replicate their purchase is, is essentially the name of the game when we're trying to use other sellers' storefronts. Right, and we've done a video previously when we tried to uh, target great value, which we know is a Walmart brand, and try and use that as an entryway to find other sellers and, and ultimately find other products and profitable products to get your catalog going. Because we just need to kind of you know get the snowball running because once we find a couple of profitable products, we can then start to link those to other profitable products and then we're off to the races. But another strategy we can use to get that ball going, to start building our catalog, to populate our catalog with the first couple products is using Lego as an entryway. The reason being is Lego we know is notorious for, I mean, not having uh, any wholesale accounts, right? Lego is just a notoriously OA brand. Walmart, Target, Kohl's, all the name, all the big box retail stores that you would think of are holding and carrying Lego. And likely is the case that sellers aren't buying directly from Lego, right? So we can target Lego as another way to um, find a way sellers associate with other sellers and start to learn and use their storefronts to map back to profitable products, right? And so that's what we'll, we'll do to um, get going here, right? So we'll search specifically Lego. We could see our products, 24,000 results. And we're also just going to kind of... Um, implement some other filters, right? We'll use some sort of sales rank filter, 100,000. Just, uh, yep, 100,000. And then we'll also do an offer count minimum filter, right? Because we want to be associating and finding other OA sellers. So we want to be finding listings and looking at listings that lots of other sellers are interested in and then selling. Right? We're not necessarily interested in this particular Lego product that we're going to find, we're interested in the products that all the other that the sellers are selling in addition to the Lego products, all right? So we can start just clicking on. Well, actually, we'll add no Amazon as well. Um, we'll hit this no Amazon, 800 products, and so again, this first product is, is pretty arbitrary in nature. We don't necessarily we're not necessarily interested in whatever Lego product this is, we're interested in the information that it provides us and the information that it leads us to. All right, so we're on just a random arbitrary product. What we can now do is if we click into any of these, we'll use SellerAmp, if we click into any of these storefronts, we can quickly identify the other brands that these sellers are offering. All right, so we'll just look for a seller that, you know, very new account, we'll look for uh, this seller with six reviews, right? Clearly a new seller, likely is the case that he's buying or he or she is buying from other retail big box stores. And hopefully we can start to try and replicate some of the purchases and, and products that they're um, offering, 
All right, so Lego, we're not interested in Microsoft Mint. Uh, we can see what Mint brand is. Looks like they're Pokemon. Probably RA stuff. We're looking for, like, awayable products, right? Products we can purchase online um, and, and kind of go from there, right? And so we could see, we could, well, all we're doing right now is really just qualifying the product, making sure it's, you know, a relatively steady um, offer or demand, uh, sales rank, green sales rank, and then the buy box is pretty uh, steady as well, right? So we can simply just map that back. We know our buy cost, our buy box is going to be about 26. So right off the bat, we know we're going to be having to purchase around 13, right? So it looks like it's a three-in-one body cream scent teak wood. Um, and if this is the same product, we're going to be almost game on. It looks like mix and match full size, buy three, get one free. So it looks like we can buy this for 13 dollars in one hair, food, and body wash. Um, this is actually the first product that we find off the cuff. So if this works, I'll be very, very lucky because it's not usually this easy. All right, so we'll click into here, and let's start to do a little bit of analysis in terms of what we think we'll be able to sell that and identify if this really is an actually a, a good product. First thing we want to do is kind of look at the buy box trending. All right, so the past two months, it's been, you know, 26 to 30-ish. Right now, it's probably down to 25. The offers are relatively steady, not increasing a crazy amount. So this is a decent product. We would look to sell between probably 26 and obviously, ideally, up to 32. But realistically, probably somewhere between 26 and 28. We can see the offer counts here, see where the other sellers are priced at. We have a lot of inventory here at 26, 27. So likely is the case that that's where we would kind of come in at, right? So if we price here at 28, at 20, we'll say 26, our buy cost is 13, our ideal buy cost is 13. But it looks like we could probably get it, or our buy cost is 13 and a half. So that's about $260, $270 profit. It's about a 10% margin without anything else. Sales isn't great. Sales rank isn't great. Um, but I did see mix and match full. So what if we add um, four to the cart? Is that going to give us some sort of a discount? Buy three, get one free. You would think that that would mean that one of them. Um, cool. So that changes the price a little bit. Sales tax is going to be eliminated. Um, so if we do, it's about $47 would be our new cost, accounting for the discount. And we are buying, what is it, five, four. So it brings our cost down to $11.75, which that would make this profitable. Again, not a home run product. You'll probably sell five to 10. We could actually run through that analysis, right? So if we start tallying up what the competitive sellers are offering, um, we're focused on FBA, uh, prime only, yep. So it looks like there's one, two, three, or four, five, six, about six that we'd be concerned with. These guys are a little higher. If we come in at 27, which we, 26 to 27, we have about six competitive offers that we'd be competing with, right? And if there's a call at 120 sales on the table, somewhere between 10 and 20 sales per month, right? And it looks like Four dollars on a twenty-six dollar purchase is about fifteen percent margin. We just also want to double check the buy box rotation, just to see that there's no heavy hitters, heavy dominant sellers owning the buy box. And it looks like we're pretty, pretty fine. Thirty-five percent celebrate alive, and then nineteen, eighteen, ten. So this would be fine, right? It looks like we can go buy ten to twenty, sell them around three or four dollars, accounting for the discount, and have ourselves a first product. Now again, the next step. This is one product. The next step would be go through each and every one of these storefronts and look and identify and go through the same process, or, or rinse and repeat time and time again until you build up a catalog, right? So we can click into any of these, probably around the same price point that we would be offering, and then do the same thing. Look at, see, it looks like Bath & Body Works 302 products. We already found one Bath & Body Works product, so I would be inclined that there's probably going to be other profitable ones in this area. And it looks like these are all sort of awayable products um, in fashion design, Yankee Candle, et cetera, et cetera. So that's it, right? Especially as you're getting started, you have to use every resource you can. Storefronts are going to be our biggest resource because that just allows us, and it, it takes a, a lot of, it implements a lot of efficiencies into our business from a sourcing perspective. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like the video, leave a comment below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you in the next one.